Hiya, I'm Kylie, an incoming freshman at MIT, and I'm here at the Ruby Wildlife Preserve to tell you about the scientific research process. Let's go! So there, if you're interested in scientific research, there are two different routes you can take. Um, and I think I briefly went over this in one of my other videos, so I'll go more in depth in it now for those of you who are interested. So the first method is that you find some sort of um, in-place research opportunity that you can take advantage of. So that means like an internship or a summer program or some sort of professor who's doing it already who has an offer out there for a research assistant or something like that. Um, take a look around at those kinds of opportunities and take advantage of that. Like apply, um, sorry there are mosquitoes everywhere, <laughs> apply or contact the professor. Do those kinds of things and to get yourself into scientific research because even if you have no experience, you need to start somewhere, right? So that was the first option. Option number two, sorry so many mosquitoes, um, is that you start your research yourself. So um, if there are no opportunities around you, like that happened to me because I live in a small town middle of nowhere in Idaho, um, you have to create your own research and so what you end up doing is you look for some sort of place that could, you could do research at like a university or a local community college or even your own house and then you look for some sort of problem or some sort of um, new innovation that you're interested in and then you just go for it. So for me it was astronomy and so um, there was a local observatory so I went there and um, they had some photography equipment and um, some ph photometry equipment so I did some photometry, um, observational astronomy work and um, it was actually in detecting exoplanets so I just learned how to do it all by myself with some little help on how to operate the telescope and stuff from the observatory coordinator. But aside from that, um, I had basically had no help. I did it with my brother and we took it to a science fair and qualified for ISEF, the International Science and Engineering Fair. So things like that can happen to you if you go for it by yourself. And it'll also give you a good story to tell to um, college admissions officers when you do your essays and other interviews and stuff like that for college because they like to hear about innovation and being proactive and those kinds of things and oftentimes that comes with doing your own research. So um, those are the two options that you have for scientific research and um, I hope that at least one of them sounds appealing to you. So I thought it'd be boring to stare at me the whole time while I'm talking about this because we're out in the middle of the great Nevada wilderness so I thought I'd show some shots of the beautiful landscape and the things I experienced here while I was camping here uh, while I give you guys some tips. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, so tip number one, if you're working with a professional mentor who's like a professor or something, your whole entire research project is basically going to revolve around your relationship with them. So make sure right off the bat you appear very friendly and nice. I know that seems obvious but it's very very important because if you establish a good friendship with your professor then the corresponding research process is going to be much, much easier for you because they'll want to help you. They'll want to put in the time for you. And for professors and, and the such, um, their time is very valuable. So you'll want to become as good, as good terms with them as possible so that they're willing to offer you as much of their time as um, you can possibly get. So that will make your research um, more profitable and you'll learn more and you'll be able to do more and have um, more chances at those science fairs and all of those other opportunities that you want to go with your research, like publishing and things like that. So make sure you are on good terms with your research professor when you go into that. So tip number two. If you're working on research by yourself, make sure you do as much preparation before you start because that's very, very important to how your research is actually going to turn out because I learned that the hard way and um, you don't want your research to crash and burn because you weren't prepared beforehand. So um, what I mean is that do some background reading on what you're doing, make sure you know exactly what you're going to be doing before you do it. So I did my research in observational astronomy and um, that involves a lot of taking pictures, knowing what to do with those pictures, knowing how to edit them, um, things like that to get the results. So getting the results was the hardest for me because I didn't know how to do that. So my mentor of sorts, um, he gave me some stuff to read. 
And so I read that and I knew how to do things. I knew the proper terms for everything so I could um, reference them and stuff. But actually doing it, like the nuances of it and everything, I had no idea. So I had to um, not only try and look up things, but I had to do some trial and error and it wasted a lot of my time just figuring out things. And of course that's part of the research process, right? But the point is you should try and be as prepared as possible beforehand to limit your wasting time. Okay, so tip number three, the final one, I guess. Make sure you know what route you want to take with your research. Where is it ultimately leading you? Do you want to go to scientific competitions? Do you want to be published? Do you just want to learn more about your field? Do you want to explore your scientific interests? What kind of route are you looking to pursue with doing research? Because if you don't have some sort of end goal in mind, it, you won't feel like you need to push through. And um, the more incentive you give yourself, the faster you're going to work, the better your results are end up, um, are going to be, like, the higher quality things are going to be because you care more about it. And so make sure you have a, a end point in mind when you start entering your research. Hey, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed those clips of the great Nevada wilderness here at the Ruby Lake Wildlife Refuge, and I'll catch you next week. Bye!